Hello friends, welcome to Be in Nature. Today we're checking the bees to see if we can replace a pallet that's pretty dilapidated and rehome a wild hive into a more stable box. It's a bit of a bumpy ride on the Massimo to get to our hives. A little smoke lets them know we are here. You can see that the pallet is pretty broken and it's becoming unstable and unsafe. The first thing we do is measure to make sure that we have enough space for our new pallet floor. It's going to be close, so we'll move our last hive over just a little bit before we start disrupting everyone. We are hoping that the bees don't get too aggressive today. It's the perfect weather for this though, sunny and warm, and the bees are carrying in a lot of pollen from somewhere, so they're pretty happy at the moment. Off camera, we moved the hive just off the pallet so we could clear the pallet away. There's really not much left of it. A new pallet is down and the bees are now back in their old spot, much, much more stable. Our next project requires a whole new hive box. Dad placed this white hive in a tree last fall to see if he could catch a swarm and these bees obliged. He brought them back here for winter. We aren't sure exactly what we're going to see inside, and they may have a very messy hive. We need to move them into a better box, so we're hoping they're okay with this idea. We were pleasantly surprised to see that they kept things pretty neat. We decided to move their old white box away first, and put their new home in its place. We'll be placing them in the blue home one frame at a time. These bees have had no treatment at all, so we're happy to see that they look like they're thriving. The first frame is a little bit of a mess, so we'll be replacing that one, since there's not a whole lot for them to miss. On the next frame, we can see that there are a lot of hive beetles inside. We'll be treating them for that for sure. Most of the time, bees will contain a hive beetle problem on their own, but these are too plentiful and they'll need our help. We'll show you how that works later in the video. Since we have to move each frame, we like to inspect it to see what we'll find. We're seeing eggs, brood, nectar, and capped honey. We like to see a brood pattern where most of the cells are filled in without a lot of empty spots. We did spot the queen. Not only did these bees have hive beetles, there was even an old mouse nest in the bottom of the hive meaning these poor bees have had their challenges, but overall, they're doing so well. We're switching out some of the old messed up frames to give them something better to work with. We don't want to take all of their honey yet though, so even though some of the frames aren't pretty, they stay for necessity. We had to shake the last of the bees back in since we didn't want to reuse that frame. The bees have been very docile. They don't seem to mind us a bit. We closed them up, but we'll be back to treat for those beetles. Look at all the pollen they carry on their little legs. We're heading over to the next section of bees, and we're just checking through some frames to see how healthy our hives are. We want to make sure they have all the resources they need to stay healthy and happy. If they start running out of room, they will swarm. That's not necessarily a bad thing, though. We like catching swarms and it also gives the hive a brood break. This can help stop mite reproductive cycles from ruining hives, so swarming isn't all bad. So much pollen. Not sure where they're finding it, but they're finding it. We'll give them a little smoke as a heads up that we're here. They still have some sugar left over from when we were here in February. They have used some, but not all, so that's a good sign. They're looking pretty good. Dad can see that there are several frames with brood even before pulling them out of there. The bees somehow ended up queenless last year, so we gave them a queen cell. They were able to produce a new queen in time to bulk them up before winter. She's been good to them. They made it through the winter and seem to be thriving. We'll see if we can find the queen to tell her what a great job she did. We'll start on the side with the fewest bees, so the first one we pull is empty meaning they still have some space to grow. On this frame, they're making their own wax pattern. 
Many frames we give them already have a base of wax for them to work with, but sometimes they just get an empty one from us to make their own. We spot the queen on the next frame. She's lovely. It's a little harder to see without the sun, but there are eggs down in some of those holes. The next frame has a lot of brood. Dad says that one full frame of brood can cover three frames with bees once they've hatched. You can see all the larvae that haven't been kept off yet on the other side. They are those little white curly things. There's more brood on the next frame, too. And the pattern she's laying in is pretty filled in, which is a good sign she's a good queen. They mostly lay in the middle of a frame, leaving the edges for honey stores. The next frame shows a large hole in the middle of the brood that have likely already hatched out, and she's been back to lay even more eggs. Trying to look in to see eggs can be difficult, but we did manage to see some. They are super tiny. The next frame has some brood and some drone cells. The drone cells are the slightly bigger ones that look more like orange bubble wrap. Drones are larger than worker bees, so it makes sense that their cells would be too. The plastic frames don't seem to be as popular with our bees for some reason, but they're still working on it. This has so much pollen, the queen doesn't have much room to lay on this one. The last frame has a few wonky bits that we'll try to scrape off. Sometimes the bees will straighten out their pattern with a little help like that. We decided to move that emptiest frame in just a bit so that it's no longer on the edge. It will encourage the bees to start using that space too. I ended up with a small visitor full of pollen. So much pollen. This box was so calm, even though we went clear through their hive, and I was kind of blocking their entrance. The bees in the next box were mostly on the right, so we started on the left. Some of the cells were so red, and we have no idea where that pollen is coming from. I thought it was so fun to see the different colors coming in. Some looked like they had pollen on their heads, too. Before we go, I wanted to talk about that beetle treatment. This is the beetle blaster treatment. Dad already treated our beetle hive off camera, but I wanted to show what happens. It's a small plastic container meant to fit down in between the frames inside the hive. We pour oil on both sides and close it up. The bees will then chase beetles into the trap where they will be unable to climb back out. You can leave this in the hive as long as beetles keep falling in it or until it fills up. We'll have to empty it and reset it until we don't see any more beetles. This treatment is completely harmless to the bees, but devastating to the beetles. I hope this video showed you something new. I know I learned a few things hanging out with my dad, so maybe you did too. Thank you for watching.